Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world. I'm Dan Marani. And this is the Native America Tatanka. Unbelievable. The superstars and legends are pouring in for Wrestling Insider Special Edition. Stand by. Brand new episode is up next. Wrestling fans, we explode into Christmas for the ninth annual Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive Cyber Fan Fest. A human sea of superstar guests have come to MWF Studios for live interviews, tributes, and virtual autograph signings. The good news is, if you miss these superstar signings, we have individual autograph photos available as well as all-inclusive VIP packages throughout the season. If you want them for yourself or to give us a holiday gift for Christmas, Get the order in by December the 19th. On Christmas night, we'll reveal the winner of the massive Christmas week mega raffle where one lucky fan wins an entire jackpot of prizes again to benefit the Paul Bearer Holiday Headlux Toy Drive. 2020 has been a brutal year for the economy as well as our toy drive efforts. We could use any and all the help you could give us. Be part of the professional wrestling community. If you're going to take part in any toy drive this year, let it be one where we update Santa Claus's GPS in honor Paul Bearer's memory. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com now. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. All right, wrestling fans, happy holidays. Hopefully, I won't offend you if I use the term Merry Christmas. No, not at all. all right, Merry Christmas all right. is good. Very good. Some, you never know in 2020. Yeah, of you course. you got to be careful. Yeah, of course. 2020 has been a crazy year, right, Dan? <laughs> uh, yeah, that, and that just adds to the list. Yes. Cut down the Christmas trees. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> wrestling fans, it's that time of year again. We've been doing it since 2012 when that crazy character, the man we still love, and Miss Every Day, Mr. Paul Bearer, yes. myself, and John Cena Sr. started the Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive. This year we had to turn it into the Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive Cyber Fan Fest because we couldn't bring you the live event as much as we wanted to because of these coronavirus times. So we've had a plethora of superstars from just about every era of professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. Some true legends, those from the 80s boom. Uh, the 90s resurrection, the Attitude Era, even some of the, the current future stars, uh, superstars. Recent NXT Cruiserweight Champion Leo Rush, Impact Wrestling World Champion Rich Swan. We've had great variety here to give you, uh, again, the memories, the legends, the experiences, the places, how they saw it, how they remember it from their point of view. And I am so happy to have a man here. Uh, you know, as much as we're going to talk about the toy drive, as much as I love to talk about the toy yes. drive, as you mentioned, as I mentioned to you when you came in, I am such an aficionado and have such great love from the area of the country you're originally from down in Pembroke, North Carolina. It's beautiful down there. Beautiful. I want to say hello to everyone watching the Wrestling Insiders. Yeah, um, uh, everyone knows my character, Native American, but I'm not someone who just portrayed that character. I'm truly Lumbee, uh, the Lumbee tribe of North Carolina. It's in Pembroke. Dan mentioned he's been in that area before, about three hours east of Charlotte, about an hour south of uh, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Our tribe is a very successful tribe. We have doctors, lawyers, attorneys, business business owners, farmers. We have our own brand new cultural center, which Dan Beautiful. has seen. Uh, so we're different compared to some of the other native tribes. Unfortunately, some of the native tribes throughout the United States of America, it's just terrible as far as poverty, as far as so many social issues, health issues, jobless uh, uh, there's just so many issues on reservations. So our tribe is a very successful tribe. So yeah, again, Pembroke, North Carolina, the Lumbee tribe of North Carolina. It's been an honor to be able to represent them throughout all these years. But all Native American people, as Vince did, I had that red streak. It represented the bloodline of all Native American nations. I've been proud to, to represent the people. And that was an area that was crushed by flooding, not once but twice over the past. Oh yes, six years. yes, yeah. a couple times, yes, yeah, really, Co really, yeah, yeah. a couple times. Um, you know, I, I haven't been there recently. It was a couple of years ago. Every year we have a Lumbee homecoming, mm -hmm. where we actually get together. Last time I was there, I was in a big truck. Actually, Sue 
sent me a whole bunch of t-shirts, was shooting them off in the gun, you know. Uh, everyone had a, had a great time because we ha actually had a wrestling event. We had a big parade during the day. We do a lot of cultural stuff where there's powwows and all that kind of stuff. So our big time of the year, if you ever want to come down, July the 4th, Lumbee Homecoming, it's called. So if you ever get a chance, come check us out, Pembroke, North Carolina. Uh, a lot of natives in that area, probably about 150,000 approximately identify themselves or they have their actual Lumbee uh, membership card. I tell you, Paul Bearer and I had a lot of fun in that city when we had a live event there. I think our first one down in the area was back in, all the way back in November of 2010 right after they built that new Holiday Inn Express there. I don't know if you've seen oh, that. Oh, yeah, brand new. I've stayed there, yeah. It is. It's yeah, just it's such a nice, quiet, yeah. relaxed area. Nice people. I know it's Pembroke, North Carolina, isn't exactly a vacation destination. Of course. But if you're ever in the area and you're looking for a place to stay, I couldn't recommend it highly. It's very different than the Northeast way of life. I Every time I get to go down, I'm very happy to do so. I happen to be there. As a matter of fact, it was last... December is when I saw the new cultural center. Yeah, new cultural center. It's beautiful. And it, it was funny. WWE, I didn't even know it was in town. Um, and the, the individual I went to see wanted his kids to see Bray Wyatt as the fiend. And yeah. our friends in Connecticut were nice enough to set us up with passes. So just, uh, I like Fayetteville Airport too. Nice, quaint. Yes. Easy to get in and out of, unlike mm, yeah, Boston. Yeah, North uh -huh. Carolina, North Carolina is an area that if you you like the peace, you like the quiet, you like the woods, the outdoor. Uh, a lot of natives from our tribe, uh, big farmers. So there's a lot of land. A lot of people in my family owned a lot of land. So it's just a great area to get away. But it's not like a little small country town. Like you said, they got the brand new oh, Holiday yeah, Inn Express, yeah. brand new cultural center. Plenty when you got the brand new Walmart in town, you well. know you're doing really good. So again, and we also have our own college, University of North Carolina at Pembroke. So, the, you know, it's a really great area, great people, great food, uh, you know, real big on farming, real big on vegetables, corn and, and peas and okra and collard greens and core bread. I mean, you go there, you can, if you love vegetables, you go there and all the natives, they just like to have vegetable, pl vegetable plates with cornbread. So it's absolutely awesome. So if you get, ever get an opportunity to go to Pembroke, North Carolina, you'll love it. I think it's really growing too. Like I said, the first uh, live event we had down in North Carolina I think it was in late 2010. And to see that area now, because we always stay in the same place, Yes. from 2010 to 2020, it's really oh, grown. Oh, it's grown. Yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, it's grown. Uh, not to get on to politics, but mm -hmm. uh, during our current election, there was actually a rally in Lumberton, North Carolina. I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, they, Lumberton. We had yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's and, probably, and, what, yeah, 10, 15 Yeah, minutes Lumberton's away? the Jason City right next to Pembroke, loaded with Lumbee, Native Americans right there, too. Pembroke is our original hometown, but Lumberton's right next to it, and we had a big rally there. A lot of our people were there, our, our sing and dance... Uh, our sing and drum group was there actually at Trump's rally, so they were actually oh, wow. they actually got to do the drums and actually sing at the rally. So it was pretty cool, definitely. Well, again, fans, again, it's not exactly Orlando or Las Vegas as far as a vacation destination, but it's a great place to visit if you ever happen to be in that area. And back to the topic at hand: the ninth annual Paul Bear Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive Cyber Fan Fest, which is a mouthful to try and say correct yes, every time I say it. Uh, we had a lot of laughs. I remember there was a nice restaurant. I, I don't know if it was an Italian restaurant, but they served Italian food. But they, they gave us such a nice meal after the event. Myself, Paul Bear, John yeah. Cena Sr., a couple of the other wrestlers, and just uh, nice, hospitable people down well, there. Well, that's the reason I'm so honored to be part of this, Dan, because uh, when I first came into War Wrestling Federation, I love saying that. Not WWE. I love the WWE. You know, absolutely unbelievable what Vince has done with that company and, and how it's just a monster worldwide and largest sports entertainment company, I think, in the world as far as what, what we do. But when I first came into World Wrestling Federation, the people who I hit it off with, the people who I got very, very close with, was Undertaker, the dead man, Mark Calloway, and Paul Bearer. I mean, for my first five years, that's who I was traveling with, traveling with Paul Bearer, traveling with Undertaker, listening to country music, you know. We just, we all hit it off, all of us from the country. He's from Alabama. Uh, again, Undertaker originally, I think, originally was from Tennessee. Oh, really? I, I think I'm not. Okay. I'm not sure if that's originally where he was at for a short period of time, uh, but we're just all country boys. We just hit it off. 
So I spent a lot of time with Paul Bear. I really miss him, man. Really miss him. Great sense of humor, but even sometimes he could kind of live up to that last name. You catch him on the wrong day, he could even be a little moody, but you know what? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He added to the fun. Yeah. He was... Any memorable stories? I know he was a ribber. He loved his practical jokes. Anything that's... I can think of many, but I've shared mine. Well, Any Paul Bear memories yeah, in your brain? Just the greatest... Probably the greatest memories with Paul Bear is just all the great time When you're on the road at War Wrestling Federation 300 days a year, and that's exactly what I was my first six years, 300 days a year, the biggest thing that you want to do is be on the road with someone who's enjoyable, happy. Paul Bear was always laughing. Undertaker always having a great time. We just uh, working hard, you know, uh, me going to the gym during the day. I never seen Paul Bear doing the ribs, but boy, there was oh, I a... thought you were going to say I didn't see Paul Bear going to the gym. Oh, was... well, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> well, uh, Paul, Paul Bear didn't go to the gym. I, I had some, I had some great, great, uh, you know, Undertaker, you know, would get into a town and, uh, he called me Chief. He says, Chief, come by my room. I'll let you know if I'm working out today. So I'd come by Undertaker's room. You know, the little metal thing would be in the door, okay? I'd open the door. I'm already dressed, ready to go. As soon as I opened the door, I already knew he wasn't going because it was already dark in the room. It was freezing like you can hang meat in the room. Don't forget, it's the Undertaker, the dead man's room. He's laying down in the bed, and I swear, he did his gimmick even then. He would sit up in the bed and go, Chief, not going to the gym today. <laughs> And sat right back down in the bed. So we just had a lot of great time. The, the, my, my greatest memory with them was just spending a lot of great time on the road. Because you're on the road 300 days a year. I've seen a lot of guys, they didn't have relationships like that where they can enjoy being on the road, have conversation, have adult conversation, where guys ended up, you know, drinking, partying. You're looking for something else. You're missing home. So it was really uh, great to be able to click with someone so well, and that's the proper word, click, you know, Undertaker, uh, Yokozuna, the Head Shrinkers, that's what I spent all my time with, traveling on the road. Now you're talking about funny, funny jokes. Owen Hart was the one. Owen Hart was phenomenal. Probably the biggest thing that we used to enjoy with Owen, and man, we miss him. He was just, Owen Hart was truly the light in the room. He was truly always smiling. He was never down. He was always upbeat. Just a great guy. Loved his family. Hard worker in the ring. Technical in the ring. All around perfect wrestler. Coming from, again, that heart legacy, which is tremendous. Working in the dungeon. Stu Hart. Just a tremendous legacy. But I can't tell how many times you know, guys at the beginning of a tour, you know, have sometimes be on the road for many, many days. I've been on the road Months. 60 days before getting home one time. So Owen would let you get on the road and get a little bit worn out. And, you know, when you're checking in, okay, he'd look over your shoulder, whoever he wanted to get, and see what room you were checking into. Because all of us would normally go to one big hotel and stay together. So Owen would love to let everyone get in their room, okay, knowing that everyone is finally wanting to get some rest or chill, because we finally got a little bit of time before showtime, and then Owen would call whoever he looked, and he would actually disguise his voice. Hello, this is the pizza man. I, I got your 10 pizzas down here. You need to come down and pay for them. <laughs> and the guy would go, I don't have any pizza. I didn't order any pizza. And Owen would go, oh, yes, you did. I have 10 pizzas down here. You need to come and get your pizzas. I have them. I'm here in the lobby. You need to come pay. I'm telling you, I didn't order any pizza. Owen would go back and forth so much that finally, whoever he was talking to, he would get them so frustrated that he would say, you know what? I'm coming down the lobby. I'm going to kick your butt. He'd come down the lobby and Owen would be there with a whole bunch of the guys laughing. And the guy would come out, Owen, I'm going to kill you. He was just so great with good ribs. Not bad ribs, good ribs. Just stuff that you didn't, you, after it happened, all you had to do was look at Owen and just smile and laugh. He was just great to be around. He was the guy who always did ribs, but they were always good ribs. And you don't want to have a bad rib on you, because if you have a bad rib, that means the boys don't like you. Exactly. So thank God I never had a bad rib. The worst, the, probably the only rib I had, and the worst is when I first came in, okay, and Chief J. Strombo was my mentor. You know, everyone knows Chief J. Strombo did the Native American character, uh, and uh, we really hit it off. He always would talk to Vince in relation directly about me and things that he wanted to do. When I first came in, it was the Steiner Brothers. 
you know, and me with my hair, which I still have, always making sure my hair looks nice. It's looking really good. Yeah, yeah. always looking nice. Uh, you know, the Steiners see me always blow dry my hair afterwards. So the Steiners, when I went to the ring, I didn't know it was the Steiners, but I came back after the wrestling match. I come back, take a shower, now I'm going to blow dry my hair and get ready. I pull my blow dryer out of my bag. I get ready to plug it in, and there's no plug on the end. So they cut the plug right off of my blow dryer. So that, that's the worst rib I had. But we finally found out it was the Steiner. So Chief Dave Strombo went to him, don't you be messing with Tatanka. You know, he's my boy. Don't you be messing with him. You know, so but that's the worst rib I ever had, my blow dryer being cut off. I was very friendly with all the guys, and they liked me. If you got a bad rib, that means you had heat. And that means you and they were guys that got those. Yeah, they got some bad. And I even heard after my first biggest run there, after getting away, I heard there were some really, really bad ribs that happened. Well, fans, this is just a sample of the great uh, content we're going to be producing with Tatanka. He's going to be uh, a recurring guest, I guess is the best way to put it, on our Wrestling Insiders series. We're going to break down his time in the World Wrestling Federation and the, the king of sports professional wrestling in general. But here again, folks, the clock is ticking. December 25th is coming, and it means the world to us to be able to do every year, our ninth annual now, Paul Bear Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive. Again, this year it is a Cyber Fan Fest. If you missed the live virtual autograph signing that Tatanka was here for back on December the 12th, don't worry. If we're going to have the VIP packages available through. I know the mail has been crazy this year, but we're going to say if you get your order in by December 19th, we can get it to you in time, whether it's for yourself, whether to give us a gift. Uh, if we have the posters that are left over or any of the photos, Tatanka will sign them like Leo Rush and Marty and Tony and even those crazy nasty boys. Huh, nasty boys. And I mean, we've got a great package of memorabilia for you. Why not, you know, you go see yourself the Salvation Bell Ringer going into a mall. And you know what, that's great. There's a million people that are going to help those types of endeavors. But this is a special professional wrestling themed drive that we do here. And I'd like to think that between the professional wrestlers and the professional wrestling fans, that's a very special bond in a very special community. So we ask you, if you're going to support any toy drive in 2020, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of them with the state of the world right now with the economy because of the coronavirus, yes. we humbly ask you not to be confused with the Iron Cheek, but we humbly <laughs> ask you to take part in our toy drive. Again, we're not just looking for a handout or a donation. We have some great memorabilia that is available for you, whether it be personalized autographs during the live signings, uh, the VIP packages after the fact, you can still get a Tatanka autograph, a Warlord, mm -hmm. a Marty Jannetty, and everybody else, everybody that's been in this studio has been kind enough to help make sure we have enough of those packages to go out through just before Christmas time. So it means a lot to us. You don't know what I would give to have this guy with us in studio. Every time I see the lights flicker or yeah. something like that, I think he, because he was here several times, I think there was, he's playing some kind of a rib. You know yes, what I mean? Yes. Because he loved to screw with me. Oh, he yeah. saw my cane earlier. I remember one time we had a live event and we didn't have enough video people. So I had to wind up as the technical director switching the cameras. I looked and my cane was gone. So I'm like, oh. look out. Percy goes out managing the guys he's with. He had my cane. <laughs> He potatoed the guy he was working with so hard, the cane broke in half. Oh, wow. And I had nothing to go home with. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but see, those things are fun to me. And I just, you know, he was a man that, and I know I say this a lot, but I can never say enough good things about such a good person. There were times when he left um, independent wrestling, and he was back in WWF with Undertaker, or WWE with Undertaker, and he still would be in regular communication with me with ideas on how we could make what we do better. There were times he had to leave WWE when his wife was dying of yes. cancer. Three mm -hmm. different battles. His entire uh, chest load of savings, $400,000 the man spent to try and save his wife's life as she withered away and eventually passed away. And he had to go back into mortuary science to get medical insurance because they didn't offer it in wrestling. And still, he would be in regular communication with me about what we could do to make things better. So even when the man was a, a national superstar on your television around the world every week, he was still giving back to the, not to demean myself too much, but the little people yeah. in the wrestling world because he wanted everybody to do good. That's why as much as this toy drive drives me crazy sometimes, and like I said, with the economy being what it is, the 2020 version of this drive, 
It hasn't been what we hoped. But the positive, we're going to look yeah. at the positive. There's still time to participate. We got the great wrestling memorabilia over on eBay. Yeah. We got the VIP packages. We got the autographs. We got the virtual sign-ins. We're trying, trying, trying every weekend to do something great for you guys because it's all about you. It That's goes right. without saying. If we don't have these folks at home, yes. you and I are sitting in an empty room talking about mm, That's the right. You know, sometimes the superstars forget that you're not a superstar unless we got you, the fans, the WWE Universe. So we thank you. I thank you for all the great support because I got a tremendous support. You know, the native Tatanka fans, we thank you. Guys, this is a great season, what Dan was just mentioning, you know, about giving, supporting. It's a great season. Christmas is the season about giving. I would tell you it's better to give than receive. That's what the Bible says. But I've been living that life for many, 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 many years. And you'll find out it's, I won't say it's magical. It's actual, actually supernatural. When you give, it's amazing how it finds its way back to you. When you give to people who are less fortunate or you give to people to bring joy or to bring happiness in their life or maybe to get a gift that maybe they would not have a gift, it's amazing what happens to you. Even if you're going through something yourself, by giving and knowing that you're helping someone else, it puts joy in your heart, joy in your spirit. So we challenge you, whatever you can do, to help support the cause. And I will say this, I will be remiss mentioned a lot of great things about that man but there is an unsung hero that goes along with this drive every year in virtually every fundraising endeavor that we have put together with boston wrestling mwf since we started in 2011 a wonderful human being that's part of a very special club that i i, I think you're going to join it someday yes. i don't know when yes. but she is a wwe hall of famer now and you know who i'm talking about yes. the one and only sue agenson yes Sue Aitchison is absolutely awesome. I've uh, been close with Sue ever since I started in 1990. Sue, if you see this, we love you. Thank you for all your help throughout all the years. You're absolutely awesome. WWE uh, has been blessed to have you. You've just been a tremendous part of the company. I mean, she was always working with the charity work for many years. Now she's in talent, you know. She's just great how she deals with the talent. She's great how she deals with the public. Uh, everyone knows about Sue. That's the reason, again, she is a Hall of Famer. You know, Sue has supported this cause a lot. Just a great lady. So we thank you, Sue, and any of you out there that know Sue, send her a Merry Christmas wish. She, she's an awesome lady. Definitely. My regret is that every year at Christmas time, I like to send her a nice holiday-themed bouquet and she said 95% of Titan Towers is closed down, so I have no way to send it this year. Wow. So she'll yeah, get a bigger right, one next that's year. Right. How about that? That's right. I agree. All right, wrestling fans, we're running out of time here. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com. Engage with us on our social media platforms. Tatanka is one of the most social media-friendly superstars I think I've ever seen. He actually helped promote that he was going to be here, unlike... A couple of nasty people, but anyway, different story for different time. I, I get, wonder who he's speaking about. <laughs> get the, try and get your orders in by the 19th. You know what? Even if it's after December 19th and you come across this online, we can still send it out after the fact. It just might not reach you by Christmas Day. So for our new friend, Native American Tatanka, I'm Dan Marotti. Look for more great wrestling insider content coming your way with the future Hall of Famer. Until we speak again, Merry Christmas. Stay healthy. Merry Christmas, guys. Peace. Cut. Wrestling fans, we explode into Christmas for the ninth annual Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive Cyber Fan Fest. A human sea of superstar guests have come to MWF Studios for live interviews, tributes, and virtual autograph signings. The good news is if you miss these superstar signings, we have individual autograph photos available as well as all-inclusive VIP packages throughout the season. If you want them for yourself or to give us a holiday gift for Christmas, get the order in by December the 19th. On Christmas night, we'll reveal the winner of the massive Christmas week mega raffle where one lucky fan wins an entire jackpot of prizes again to benefit the Paul Bearer Holiday Headlux Toy Drive. 2020 has been a brutal year for the economy as well as our toy drive efforts. We could use any and all the help you could give us. Be part of the professional wrestling community. If you're going to take part in any toy drive this year, let it be one where we update Santa Claus's GPS in honor Paul Bearer's memory. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com now.